Do you find blend modes to be mysterious, bizarre, maybe perplexing? Well, you're the only one. JK, LOL, it can be confusing. But if you're a GIS person, take this example. We're blending all the time. We just don't think of it that way. If we use three color channels in an image like red, green, blue, we're blending those three together. Here, I've separated each of those three color channels into individual labels and given them a grayscale gradient. And then I'll just change the red bands gradient from black to red, the green bands gradient from black to green, and the blue bands gradient from black to blue and then I'll apply a screen mode to these top two and I've effectively created a color sandwich blend modes and you can do this exact same thing with the color bands of satellite imagery like this example with Landsat and I'm showing you this to try to demystify blend modes a little bit they aren't just for graphic designers and I found the best way to get familiar with blend modes is just to play with them but sometimes that's easier said than done there are a lot of moving parts with blend modes like how your layer looks and how the layers underneath it look and which blend mode you pick that's why I made this blend mode helper layer that you can find on living atlas it's a tiled layer that covers the whole map any zoom level any location any base map. There's a sample elevation gradient, a grayscale section, a full color section, and then color blocks, cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue. And each one of those has a version that fades to fully transparent, fades to white, and fades to black. Let's try out one of the most useful blend modes, which is screen. Screen ignores darkness and only keeps white or lightness. So black to white is effectively transparent to white. Now let's check out screen's counterpart, which is multiply. Multiply is another really useful one. It only pays attention to darkness. Lightness, it ignores. So a gradient from black to white is really a gradient from black to transparent. And it's also useful for thematic mapping. If you have colors sitting on top of a map and you still want to see the textures below. The hard light blend mode is a combination of screen and multiply. So you keep the blacks, you keep the whites, but the gray is now invisible. But I actually find overlay to be much more useful. It uses the white and black content of the blended layer to increase the contrast of the layers beneath. Pushing pixels is cheap and the blend mode helper is a safe place to experiment and you can do what I do which is pretty much try every blend mode in the book until you find something that gets you where you want to be and over time you build up a little collection of blend modes that you can predict what's gonna happen so I have fun I hope this is a valuable resource for experimenting with and getting more comfortable with blend modes